diversity. It'll be easier for us to find things when we group them. Mm, and how do I do that? Do you know who Carl Linnaeus is? Who is he, man? Tell me more. Help me clean up and I will tell you his story. Carl Linnaeus was a very well-known scientist born a long time ago in Sweden. He was so good at grouping things that his way of grouping is still being used today. Why is grouping of things so important? You see, there are millions of living and non-living things around us. To help us better study and understand the diversity of things, we can group them based on their similarities and differences. When we group things, we're classifying them into different groups. Oh, I get it. Can I try that with my toys? Good idea! classify them into games, mm -hmm. soft toys and vehicles. Mm, you do have plenty of vehicles. Do you know we can further classify the vehicles too? I know. For example, I can classify vehicles into cars, aeroplanes and trucks. Let me try. Now that we have classified the vehicles, shall we organize your clothes? Yes, Mom. Look, Mom, I have managed to classify my clothes. I feel great because I can find them easily now. Now that we've cleaned your room, would you like to go to the park to learn more? Yes, let's go! Let's go! Okay, let's go. Mom, look! I'm Carl Linnaeus! <laughs> I'm sure you can be! Look, the plants are growing in the pond and on land. So we can classify plants growing in water and on land. Of course. Are there other ways of classifying plants? Mm, look, Mom. I can also classify plants with or without flowers. Yes, they have something in common. They're similar because they're flowers. Yes. This group of plants do not have flower, and we can classify them as non-flowering plants, right? Good job! You're learning really fast! Non-flowering plants like this fern have spores. Now I want to take pictures of more plants. Let's go, Mom! Mom, look! The leaves of this plant is very long. Yes, different plants have different types of leaves. And look at that plant that grows on the surface of the water. I can further classify plants that grow on the water based on the shape of their leaves. That is a great idea. That's one way to classify plants. Mm, the leaves of these plants are different sizes too. Oh, Mom, I think I spotted some monkeys in the trees. Mom, can we classify animals too? Yes, let's go take a look.
and look at the lovely swans. Whoa, Mom. How can we classify animals? Look at this animal. He has such colourful feathers. Yes, only birds have feathers. Penguins, emus, flamingos are birds too. This is one way of classifying birds. Besides feather, what other body coverings are there? What about snakes, Mom? Their body covering looks different. Snakes have dry skin covered with scales. They are reptiles. Crocodiles and tortoises are other examples of reptiles. Mm, what other kinds of animals are there? Well, animals can be classified as amphibians, birds, fish, insects, mammals, reptiles. They're classified in different groups because they have different characteristics. I like to find out more about each group of animals. It's getting really late. We better head home or you'll be really tired. Mom, look at these recycling bins. We can also classify things into different materials too. Good observation. This bottle is made of plastic. We can put it in this bin. That is correct. What about this ticket? Mm, it goes into the paper bin. What about this can? Mm, metal. <laughs> that is correct. There are other materials such as wood, ceramic, fabric and glass. Now I see the importance of classifying things in our everyday life. I think you'll make a really good young scientist! Bye!